the world-famous names are all here. The new models carrying the prestige of those names will command the admiration of well over half a million people visiting Earl's Court before the motor show closes. Incorporating the latest advances in automobile engineering are all the models in the wide range of the British Motor Corporation. Safety points high up on the priority list. And more than ever before in motoring history, this year's show is of vital importance to Britain. Exports must increase if the country is to pay its way. And the car industry is a leader in the export drive. This year, the big drive. Among best-selling lines in many countries are the well-tried and always improving small cars, popular alike in the millionaire belt, where each grown-up member of the family owns a car, and among the less well-off, with whom low price and cheap running are big assets. Popular feature of the Hillman Imp, the rear engine. Another winner from the Root Stable, the singer Chamois Sport, fast, economical, a rally favourite. Sleep for the navigator while the driver pushes on. Another from singer, the Vogue. New body style, new engine, new almost everything. A new model this year, the Hillman Hunter, claiming to be the complete family car. As there are countless complete families all the world over, many with just the daughters to go with the car, the Hunter will sell well. A sensation already, the improved Ford Cortina. Previous models sold to the tune of a million in four years. And as exports can be maintained only on the basis of a wide home market, all these wonders of the industry appeal in Britain no less than abroad. The new Vauxhall Viva, for instance, better in style, shape, performance, everything you can think of. The Triumph GT6, a certain winner from the same stable as the Spitfire. Already large export orders have built up for this high-speed beauty, and the first six months production will go to the USA. From Ford of Britain, the most luxurious car they've ever made, aptly titled the Executive. Based on the Mark IV Zodiac, it's a strong contender in the medium-priced prestige car field. Interior comfort is designed to cosset even the most hard-to-please successful businessman. Naturally, overseas competition at the Motor Show is key. The 365P Ferrari, with its centrally positioned steering wheel, is the brainchild of ace designer Pininfarina. It's claimed to be a major safety feature, affording the driver better all-round vision. But hand signals are definitely out. From Sweden, the Saab Sonnet. The Saab, with their famous international rally-winning success in recent years, are another company with big expansion hopes overseas. And, like other continental motor manufacturers, have and will continue to provide the British car industry with severe world competition. But this battle for the buyers is a spur which has often taken us to the lead in export markets when our cars are renowned for their well-designed compactness, ease of handling and economy. This surely is the year of the British car. Many brand new models, including the pepped-up twin carburetor Rover 2000, are making their debut and the market is all in favor of the buyer. The Rover 2000 is one of the most successful British export cars of recent years. Its many safety features and advanced design have won it wide acclaim and demand outpaces production. The well-proven 2000 engine puts it in the luxury sports car class, though it is equally suited to more sedate and dignified driving as Sheikh Hamdan, deputy ruler of Abu Dhabi, well knows. The new Daimler Sovereign caught the eye here of a connoisseur, Sir Gerald Navarro, no less. A car with an honored name in a new version. Powerful, a great performer, not expensive for its class. Just a thing to whisk the gallant Sir Gerald into St. Stephen's Yard to impress other MPs. 
as always, the British automobile industry makes an impressive splash in the luxury field. Witness the Daimler's stablemate, the E-Type Jaguar, popular everywhere, across the Atlantic especially. What dollar earners the Jaguars have been and will continue to be. Like all our car exporters, they follow up sales with an unfailing after-sale service. Rolls-Royce knew all about exporting long before many of today's cars were even on the drawing board. And this year, as always, the Rolls embodies all that is excellent from cigar lighter to cocktail cabinet to the silk-smooth eight-cylinder power unit to which a hundred is a mere cruising speed. We look, admire, and hope to sign that check for 10,000 odd. And that is the Motor Show 1966. Everything here contributes to the good cause of getting Britain out of the red. The automobile industry's export drive. This year, more than ever, the big drive. <laughs>